Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today we're gonna start in chapter two and actually start looking at some code. And we're gonna start by doing simple LOR program. But before we get into that, gotta cover something. I'm actually traveling this week and there's gonna be a lot of background noise. I'm working from a hotel room. And I actually don't like how the videos are coming out because of the smaller monitor and so on. So I probably wouldn't record another video for this week unfortunately just because i don't like how it's looking i regret that but i wanted to do a video and uh, it's not looking too good so i'm not going to do any more for this week until i return but anyway for this hello world program our requirement is very simple print the string hello world on the standard out so we're going to look at how you do that in a couple of languages and the languages we are going to be looking at is go c and c plus source for today now I make a slight note there that says do not use a class for C++. That's because C++ is what you call a multi paradigm programming language. And what it means is that you can do procedural programming. At, for example, people who know C, C++, you can do that side of programming. You could do functional programming, which is um, like your Scala and JavaScript, that sort of thing. And, you know, Clojure and those guys. Or you can do object-oriented programming, which is sort of like what you um, would do still in also Scala, can do object-oriented programming, and um, Java especially. No, the thing is, just because of what happens when one language gains a feature or people learn something new, is they start integrating other things. So even though Java is really object-oriented programming language, it later introduced some functional feature starting like Java 8. And that's because they look at what Scala was doing and everybody's excited out of Scala functional stuff and they just borrowed some of it. And this is true of all languages. No language just come out and just start from scratch with whatever. It uses some of the things that are good from previous languages and then add some new stuff. And then some of the existing languages just try to integrate some of whatever is new or they've learned and the user need. All right, enough of that. Let's just try to jump in. And so we're going to go to our command line. I'm going to make a directory here called um, chapter 02 hello world and because we're going to be starting with go and that's because I'm assuming that if you're following this series you most likely came from my previous situ series the go programming language and or learning go programming language and so let's start with go and so we'll write a simple hello world in go here and if we pretend that our you never programmed before, this is the first time you're programming, you'd see it, I want to print hello world, that string, but then I have to do a lot of things, right? Look at what I have here. I have to force include, um, wrap that string in a function. Of course, I wouldn't know that's a function, but somehow it seems like I'm giving the instructions, the computer instructions to print this thing. And then it's preceded by that FMT, which is kind of weird. But then the whole thing is wrapped in yet something else called a function. So I'm using a function print line and then I'm defining a function main. And then of course I have my import statement which give me access to this print line function that I wanna use that's provided from somewhere. And then of course my old program is wrapped in a package. And that's what you required for a minimal functional Go program. And of course I can just do right click and that runs and it works. Good. So. Nothing big there. If we just come and have a go, this is fine. You're accustomed to seeing this. Um, a lot to in here if you're a first time programmer or you're new to programming. So what about if we were to instead go look at C, for example. So we create a directory for C and we're gonna make a program main.c and we're gonna start off by doing inc pound include is what we call that and we include stdio and then we're going to write our in main program and we're going to say printf hello world now a couple of things to notice here we still have this function that we're going to call to print out our string and of course that needs to be wrapped in well not of course but that also is wrapped in a function which we're going to call the main function the important difference here is this is a global function we'll get back to this when we talk about c++ and because if you look at our C program, there's no over package that we put our main into. The only thing we have there is this include statement, and that's where we get our hello world from. 
um, or printf sorry from printf function from if we did not have that include studio.h actually your program would still kind of compile but that's besides the point here we wanted to say that we're going to use printf function and that's defined or declared rather in this standard io stdio.h file and so we're saying hey there's this function called printf and its signature and definition is in this file is from this file and there's how we, we know how to use it and so we right click on it and run it and we get the same thing but we should really put a return zero and the reason why is because our function there says it returns an int so we should um you know return it zero or return some sort of integer um notice how where your, your, your return type is it's on the left hand side as compared to go where it would have been on the right side but in go we don't have to see our int our main function return anything now let's just compare the c code and the go code and for that um, i'm going to right click on the c file and say select for compare and then i'm going to go um, right click on the go program and say compare it then i'm going to give myself some room here then look at how similar they look now, it might look like if they're very, very different, but they're not as different as you might think. They're very similar. Now, Go has the package, that's because Go requires that everything be in some form of a package. So even your main program, which is the entry point to your application, has to be in a package. Where it's C and C++, that's not a requirement. They have an opposite requirement. They actually said, though, it needs to be a global function. And um, so we'll talk more about that another time. But if we go back and just modify our C program a little bit in terms of we're going to force a put a comment at the top to represent to force the include statement to come down a little bit. And once we do that and we go back and compare our, um, our C and Go files again, you can see how much alike they actually are and they don't look that very much different. Now, in C, the formatting is done such that the opening parentheses after the function name is put on the very next line, whereas in Go and Java, it's sort of put on the same line for things like function, if statement, and so on, and hence why you see that slight difference there. But other than that, they really, really are very close. I mean, C has the return zero. Um, Go doesn't need that. But if you can imagine that on line six for the C code, which is on the left-hand side, you actually combine line six and five. The real difference there is um, not too far off. And actually, in Go, we could use printf also. All right. So let's write um, our C++ program. And we use pp, which means plus plus. And we mean that cpp instead of main and the actual plus plus. But let's say we want to write a program. And so for C++, you can use the C out um, operator. And but that comes from the um, IO stream precompiled L library. And don't worry about it, but it's almost like a header library like in C. And that's why you have that pong include. And remember what I said is that C is the like the true successor to C. It was meant to be like the successor to C. And unlike other languages, it wasn't quite meant to be a successor. Um, but anyway, but notice how we had to do this STD colon C out and that's because C++ put things in somewhat of a package but they call it a namespace but our entry program our main entry function sorry main doesn't need to be in a namespace I will see later on if you try to put it in a namespace what is going to happen and now if you compare the C and C++ program look how similar they are and that's intentional the people who did C++ like I said intended to be a successor to C and so they wanted to bring all pretty much as much as they can from C so the people who already knew C they were targeting people who already know C not people who are new to programming but people who already know C to start using C++ and so it made sense to make C++ very much like C and introduce just the new concepts that were going to be a benefit we're going to see later on what those new things are supposed to be it is so crazy that you can actually make this even more like C and by referencing the C studio library but as a pre-compile error and we can call it C studio instead and then notice how we can use the same printf statement 
And now when we go back and look at comparing C++ and C code, we'll see that oh, um, not only does this work, we, could, we should run it and test it, and we can verify this by changing um, the string, and it works. So let's reset this, and then now go back and compare the C and C++ code, and you can see there's literally only one line difference, and that is whether you include stdio.h and c, which is a header file, or you include a pre-compiled header file called cstudio.h. Notice that C++ they dropped it that h. There's some reasoning behind that, but notice I'm using the word pre-compile versus um, just a header file. All right, so let's return our C++ code to a more C++-like example, um, not one that's meant to look more like C. And let's pretend that we want to put it in a namespace, sort of like a package in Go. And if you did that, um, your code wouldn't work. You'd have this long list of error messages here. And the reason why is because even though you have this idea of a namespace, which is equivalent to a package in Go, um, you can't really put your main program in it. Even if I pull out the include statement and say, okay, that goes outside of the package. Um, still, and it doesn't matter what I call this package, I could have called this package V, N, Q, whatever. It still would not work. So in C++ and in C, your entry point for your application must be a global function with the name main, and it has a very specific requirement. Even though the compiler is very lax, which is it should return an integer. Even though if I don't return an integer, my program would still compile. But that's C and C++ for you. A really good compiler would warn, or if you turn out warning for every little silly thing, which is an option you can pass to the compiler, it would tell you this. So, in summary, C and C++ C is sort of like the base language, one of the first high-level languages. It wasn't the only one that COBOL and that last thing, Fortran and so on. But C was one of the first system programming languages that was almost portable, not quite. Some people like me think C is kind of portable, and then other people would strongly disagree. And I will have to agree with them too, even though I say that I agree that C is mostly portable. And then, then after that, there were many other languages after C, but one of the true successors, um, or recognized successors, was C++. And then once C++ hit the scene, um, you had object-oriented languages like Java that tried to clean up and do what C++ intended, but better than C++. And years later, you had something like Go. But you can still see that lineage between C, C++, and Go. They look very, very, very similar. And as we continue to explore the languages, we're going to look at more of the differences, why they're different, or why they're the same, etc. Okay. Like I said, I'm traveling this week. I'm in a hotel room. The screen resolution is all screw up, screwy over there. So no more video for this week. Sorry about that. Um, if you actually keep in pace with the series, this is bad for you because you have to wait until next week. But if you come in way after, it wouldn't matter. The video is going to be there already. Okay. Um, follow me on Instagram, Twitter. Um, please thumbs up the video. If you have comment, either positive or negative, but please be constructive. Put them in the um, comment section below. Um, if you like what you're seeing, thumbs up. And of course, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. All right. See you in the next video. Thanks for your time. Take care. Have a great day.